Some time ago, I showed you how to build a colonial empire most effectively, using Spain as an example. And in today's episode with Portugal, I'll show you a tactic to create one mighty colony, which is the largest country in the world, because its borders stretch across both Americas. However, I'll do it in an unconventional way that I haven't used before. And I'll be honest, the final result surprised me, but more on that later in the video. Greetings imperialists, it's Lucas here! Portugal is a small country, which is mainly played for colonies, and unfortunately it once excelled in in this, but not so much today. Yes, Castilian missions or Castilian ideas or similarly for England are simply much stronger than the Portuguese ones in this regard. But does that mean this tiny country in Europe can't achieve anything interesting? Not necessarily because as they say, small but crazy. First of all, privileges, almost standard, but watch out. We leave a spot for the bourgeoisie, at least one, because in the future, we'll need a privilege for better colonization. And I will do the same for the clergy estate. One slot for a privilege must be left vacant. I'll take the privileges for cheaper advisors as soon as I increase the stability to plus one. We reclaim land and execute the trick, of course, for cheaper advisors. And great, I have a chance for a cheaper military advisor. Now let's move on to our court because first of all, we're removing the focus on diplomatic points. Next, we hire a cheap administrative advisor. We always have one as Portugal. Just as we take a level 3 diplomatic advisor, he is admittedly old, so he will die soon. But we also leave a spot for a cheaper military advisor as soon as one becomes available from agenda. Rivals! Ugh! And again, we must wait because we don't have Granada. Oh, it's there! I'm blind! Well then, of course, it's Granada, Morocco, and either Tunis or Tlemcen. Personally, I choose Tlemcen because, you know, they took my green color. We want to form an alliance with Spain very quickly. We don't aim to conquer them. That's not our primary focus in this game. They will be our noble ally. We're improving relations with England, but note, we don't go for the royal marriage. We will be ending this alliance once we complete this mission. Wow, I have an alliance with the Pope right from the start, so I'll take advantage of it. This will enable me to accumulate papal influence faster because the better the relations, the more points we receive. Additionally, the Pope often sends extra cardinals to his allies, of which we currently have none. The papal influence will be useful for activating certain privileges. We're probably not aiming to become the Pope, but there are two privileges here that would be very handy for us. Moreover, we lower our army maintenance since we won't be waging wars. From our entire army, we discard the cavalry because it's simply too expensive and unnecessary. We demolish the fortresses we have in Europe as they are are also not needed at all. We keep the fortress in Afrika. When it comes to our flagship, we start its construction immediately. And it will be a light ship, not a heavy one. Because light ships are significantly faster, as you can see. This will allow us to explore the world faster. And as Portugal, especially for the Exodus strategy, this is what we need to focus on. Now, we choose to extend our fleet's range. The Navy, Barrage, will also come in handy. And when we stop exploring or simply have time, our ship will support trade. Additionally, we will build up to the limit with trade ships. Generally, I might forget to mention this later. I will sell our heavy ships later, but only after the war with Morocco. For now, we take them out of our fleet and mothball them because they are very expensive to maintain. The rest of the fleet can be sent to protect trade in Seville. Let's discuss our missions for a moment. In most guides, a common mistake is made. People quickly click on the mission that increases our settler chance by 20%. Don't make this mistake. You should activate this mission in Portugal only when you have fully developed both the exploration and expansion ideas. Or in the second case, when you have the second colonist from the ideas. Why is that? Because you maximize the colonization process in this way. Also very important, do not kill your Afonso de Avis. Firstly, he has quite a good colonization modifier, plus 15. Secondly, there are two events related to him that will occur later. No, a nice start indeed. A royal marriage with Castile? Sure, why not? And then we send our diplomat to Castile for curry favors. We need to quickly earn 10 points here. The last third diplomat goes to Granada. We build a spy network in this country. Then we make claims to one of those two provinces. Stability up, privileges for cheaper advisors. Silly me. I completely forgot that Portugal has been starting with Diego Gomez for some time. And we can already explore the world at the beginning, which will speed up certain actions. And we also have local organizations in Portugal. And here, most of them are totally useless. But still, I'll take local tax modifier plus 25%. And solely for the reason that I won't be playing this country longer than until 1520 to 30. If it was a long campaign and I stayed with Portugal, I would choose the initial development of local goods production modifier. But currently, the first era is about the tax meta and you should focus on taxation. After we've laid a territorial claim on Granada, it's also a good idea to lay one on Morocco. Though no, I won't need that. Absolutely not. 
so we send our diplomat to the Pope. And literally, after distributing these Portuguese organizations, I got three more gold. Alliance with England! And yes, army morale will be useful during these first 20 years. So we take this mission immediately, and then we end our alliance with England because they might call us into the War of Maine. I'm so sorry! And literally two days later, the main event occurs, but luckily England gave up the province. All this was of course planned. Afonso ascended to the throne and has an heir, he's not that good, also named Afonso, but the queen consort is quite nice. Oh ho 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 ho, such a lucky break, what was I hoping for? Alright, A3 pips, siege is something, I recruited a free company, which will allow us to complete a certain mission. Oh, we also have a mission to build a ship, and we get a free shipyard in Lisbon. Oh, how unfortunate, Afonso is dead. Diplomatic technology, here we develop only up to level 4 and then hold back and accumulate diplomatic points because we'll want to quickly develop the exploration idea. The truce period with Granada has ended and great, however, we wait until November, unless we notice that Castile gets literally close to the borders of Granada. Then of course, we use the favors option on Castile, indicating they are preparing for an upcoming war, Duke of Coimbra. And honestly, many guides choose stability. I don't know why when we can get such a juicy bonus for this young ruler, November 12th, 1449, troops in position, we confiscate land. Ah, alright, Spain will suppress the rebels for me, wait a minute, I had an agenda to follow, what an idiot. No! Oh, that will come in handy. And we attack, of course, Morocco. Morocco, where we want to attack Tangiers, and we absolutely want to capture it. We call Castile and Granada separately. Tunis? Oh, I can do that too. So why not? While paused, we send our troops to be the first ones in every location in Granada. From here, we really need just one or two provinces as we will need the Andalusian culture. I didn't get a black flag because, of course, I had military access from Castile and I called Castile into this war. Otherwise, I would have gotten a black flag and couldn't have occupied Granada the way I did. Yay, our Grand Portuguese fleet, overall one of the strongest fleets around, and off we go to battle against Morocco and its allies. I hope the Castilian fleet is around here and will assist us soon. Hello Castile, did you just get sunk? Oh no, no, okay, we won, we won. Wait, Aragon saw me as a rival and I missed that. Oh well, never mind. Oh, the walls have fallen, mainly Castilian army stands here, so let's use them and storm. Allies come in handy, right Castile? However, Portugal is quite great as it has very cheap coastal barrages. Now I have it reduced by around 40% as I possess a flagship here. But we also have a naval doctrine that further reduces it by an additional 50%. Oh, Castile is doing it. Castile is crossing. Gibraltar is doing it. And we'll see how this will end. Huh? It was a complete annihilation. What just happened here? All right. Anyway, Tangier will be ours because that's what we're waging war for. And in fact, this is the only province I need here. I don't know if I'll take this gold mine. And okay, here we have a good opportunity because look at the siege progress on Fez and this fortress is a real pain to conquer, usually. So, of course, we want to capture it at this progress level. And beautifully, troops defeated and we immediately get 57% siege progress. And the Spain left Tangiers. Why did you do that, Spain? What What's this about 306 days I just got here? here? And beautifully, Spain is really doing work here. They're quickly capturing the fortress for me, defeating Moroccan troops. Everything's going smoothly. Meanwhile, I'm in Tunis. I have an opportunity, attacking Klimkin with the humiliate Casus Belli. Great, Tunis is paying us war reparations. And they're giving us some money. The first government reform. Oh, and I forgot that Portugal now has this cool monarchy, which basically gives it nothing for colonization, but it gives taxes, so it's kinda good. Hey, this reform looks looks really cool. And yeah, you guessed right, the second reform is a tax reform. We show our strength. Thanks to this, I got 100 points of each kind. Obviously on Tlemcen, I'm conquering most of Granada. I'm taking some extra humiliation. We always get more points, unless I can do a show of strength here. No, because I started with that Casus Belli. And just so you know, we're not coring a single Grenadian province here. Not a single one. Because honestly, all I need from here is to steal the Andalusian culture for Algarve, which is basically what I'm doing right now. And now we can just as well sell all these provinces to Castile and from Morocco I'm only taking that one province to complete that mission but remember you might want to get the gold mine in Tafilalt because it counts double here if you get it really quickly a certain event will pop up I usually grab it this time though I'll skip and see how it goes for me this way because it'll save me a ton of admin points and I'll introduce the technology faster this way and we don't click on that mission yet right now we can sell Granada to Castile for almost 300 gold why wouldn't I all right we still need to embrace the institution 
function in Lisbon. That's why we're developing infrastructure. And of course, we're slowly developing to have here, oh, why is there so much here? So we don't need to develop because the institution will spread to us very quickly. I didn't even know that Cardinals were introducing it so swiftly. Always something new. Pedro, of course, live long. We're selling our heavy ships. We probably won't need them anymore. And great, we can now buy cheaper construction from the Pope. And I think we can now build a lot of churches in our country. A whole three. Awesome renaissance in Lisbon, but it's spreading very fast everywhere for me. Oh no, Diego died. Luckily, the most important thing he had to discover, he did. And we're making a pretty decent income with this Portugal. All right, I'm embracing the institution because I need to hurry with the technology. And more importantly, I'm kicking off the golden age now. Normally, I'd usually save this until I had two ideas to develop at once. This time, I'm doing it way earlier. This will allow me to cheaply introduce the fifth administrative technology, which means I can instantly go for exploration ideas. This lets me develop them for 358 points and that's quite a saving to start i take this policy for the fastest colonization possible then after some time i'll switch to the policy that increases native assimilation by 50 percent of course we have this privilege here establish new world mission which also gives us native assimilation plus 50 percent native assimilation means that for every 100 points of this population here we get some amount of local goods production as you can see there's not much of it here in africa the numbers are much higher and now of course we take the the privilege from the merchant estate. I hope I didn't forget any. Oh, I did forget. Look, the nobility has this cool colony cost modifier of minus 22%. And it scales, of course, with how much land the nobility has. It's always good to just calculate the colony costs. We get a lot of national decisions, and we definitely want to take the one to increase our colonial range and to get a really good explorer. Ooh hoo hoo, so many new things to discover. Yay, forward to glory. I'm already setting up two colonies in Arguin and the Cape Verde islands. This will ensure that competition from Castile or England in South America will be limited for quite some time. The first development of the era, and it will be not aggressive expansion this time. We're heading for a colony, so we take the most powerful modifier Portugal has, plus an additional 50 colonists. Secondly, because I might forget to mention, I'll be taking higher development colonies. And my initial advisor has died, and I was waiting for this moment to complete this mission as we get a 75% cheaper Inquisitor here. And since the previous one was also cheaper, you know, it's a shame to ask. And see how important it is for us to develop this to the next level. Colonial range plus 50%. And here we have additional 20%. I've got three conquistadors, whom we of course send out to search for the golden cities. Because remember, you then have a chance for events that will give you monarchy points and maybe you'll find those golden cities. I usually send one colonist to North America, one to Central and one to South. Oh look, I'm getting administrative points, unless you prefer to improve relations. And we've really discovered a lot of America. Alright, we can start colonizing soon. The first colony I have to establish, well actually here where the mission tells me to, unfortunately because it gives pretty nice bonuses. And I'm I'm setting up a second colony simultaneously with the expel minorities option. And here in Algarve, I've prepped this province to <laughs> expel the Andalusian population for now. What does preparation involve? Well, firstly, I have the Andalusian culture here. And secondly, I developed this province to level 15. That's when I expanded the infrastructure and I'll be able to develop here on the cheap. It's pretty cost effective. I crunched the numbers. These three development points here are much cheaper to relocate than just directly developing in those provinces. Of course, I'll also be doing that. And yeah, in the new world, I'll also be developing. Yay! Colonial discovery, the second development of the era. Wait, what? Women? Not gonna lie, I want this colony to be established ASAP, because it'll give me access to this area, which we have to colonize as soon as possible. Literally, every single one of these provinces here needs to be colonized quickly. It will increase my chances of getting gold. Look, I'm making almost 14 gold. Well, okay, closer to 13. 15 from taxes. Wow, seriously. I don't know what these boots are from. The third government development, and here we'll probably go with exile colonial companies. Two, as you can see, increase settler chance and reduce the costs of colonies colonies from expelling by 100%, and that's quite a bit. I really like such events. Look, a colonized province, 15 development, very nice. It practically got six development for free. And now, in such provinces, we definitely want to build production buildings. They can be useful either for manpower or quantitatively. Don't build churches, you'll just end up demolishing them any 
anyway. The goods here are such that you usually can't build manufactories just yet, because it's at a relatively late technological level and in the right places you need to build marketplaces. So now, basically, I've built all over Portugal, so I'll be constantly building production in the colonies even though it won't make me money for now, but once I move to Brazil I won't have to build it there. And we're advancing a bit in administrative technology, but we wouldn't have saved anything by not doing so. And of course we're diving into expansion ideas, for now we're making quite a modest income as Portugal. And that's without any goal, and something definitely went wrong. Oops, why did I answer France's call? I feel betrayed. Burgundy is in a personal union under Saluzzo, Saluzzo has four provinces. Good luck. Hey, my ruler died and this cool 554 successor took the throne. So now I'm executing this mission and fingers crossed, hoping in seven years I'll get that colonial perk. Portuguese Brazil, finally. Initially, we'll go with self-governing colony because it gets an additional colonist and it'll always help us in taking over these provinces here. But beware, the colony becomes very disloyal then. The colony gets a base plus than 25% towards liberty desires. So remember, after some time, you'll need to change this colony type to a crown colony. All right, I already have three colonists, so this is the moment when I trigger this mission. For 15 years, there's a 20% increased chance for a colonist, and I'll explain in a moment what all of this precisely entails. And now, to colonize as optimally as possible. Firstly, I send two normal colonists, and honestly, I will be colonizing southward here to hand over these provinces to Brazil. You always have to be on the boundary of these two areas where Brazil has a province and a new colony. And once the colonists arrive, I will withdraw them immediately. And here I want to colonize this area faster, that's why I'll be using expel minorities three times here. And look, I've prepared three provinces in Portugal, which will be transferring three development to the new world, thanks to expel minorities. And the same the other way, I do the same towards Mexico. We'll also be hopscotching provinces for Brazil because I need to hand some over to it, especially since I'll also want to conquer Mexico at some point. I've also completed the idea and see, we get native uprising, which is minus 50%, which essentially means we don't need to change our policy here anymore. As I mentioned, the, this assimilation here pretty much doesn't give much. Whoa, dude, what happened here? And remember, as soon as you get the expel done, you have to develop that province with the edict turned on and so forth to level 15. At this point, it doesn't matter which points will be used, it will always take one of each type from you. Even if you had just one diplomatic point there, it will take one of each type. I've tested this already. And essentially, when it comes to our country, we only develop in this whole Alentejo area. That's why I changed the culture here, so I can keep using the expel option and get three additional development points in Brazil. We give all the remaining points into our colony. The best area for development happens to be here on this little promontory, we get the smallest penalty. Everywhere else it's 35%, 15% increased. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't look great when it comes to Brazil. However, here it's quite good, then in La Plata it's quite good. And see how quickly our colonies are forming. 185 colonists per year and an additional 62% chance for another colonist. Our colonies will be established very quickly. Hey, wait, wait, wait. I just had to start this colonization? Awesome. And here it was about this modifier, increased chance of discovering gold. Because you see, there's a 25% chance of getting gold in these provinces. Oh, somewhere here. Here it's less, surprisingly. Another very important thing is organizing, and there's nothing better than the local goods production modifier plus 10%. Just that and nothing else. Oh my god, they got the modifier for the gold mine. Hey, look at how OP this is. And great. I finished discovering the new world for golden cities. Didn't find any. Turns out it was a scam. For the fourth reform, to be honest, I think I'll just go for a more stable country. And higher church taxes. Yay, gold fleet yeah. Okay, running six colonies at once will cost me a bit. Remember to transfer provinces, just like I'm doing now. Otherwise, another colonial nature would form in this area, another one here, and so on. And we want one big, gigantic one we'll play with. WTF, why did I get this from Castile? Why did they give it to me in this war? I didn't want any of this. Hey, look at this mission. I'll return this in a moment. A colony emerged for a brief period here. And the very same moment, I got a mission that I can hand it over to Brazil when it should have been Brazilian in the first place. All right, the most important thing now is to quickly establish a colony close to the Incas, but not declare war on them yet, only once we have a province here, because then we'll be able to continuously transfer all the provinces we conquer to Brazil. We can't do that before, and we don't want to core it. Yay, colonialism here with us. Really, on the first try, there was no Alt F4 here. All right, the time has come. It's finally here. Something interesting is happening, really, truly. It's time to declare war on the Incas. But first, we need to reform our army a bit. Namely, we need some artillery. About six cannons. I thought the war with the Incas would be interesting, but unfortunately, as always, it's a siege simulator. Look how quickly my colonies are growing incredibly fast. Now, when it comes to technology, I'll allow myself to follow 
behind a bit. We will still advance to the 10th administrative and every other type, just in major places to save as many points as possible. If someone is very keen on resources, remember that they are drawn when the colony exceeds a certain population number. Around 300 or 400, I don't remember exactly. If you want a different resource there, you can just abandon the colony and start colonizing the area again. I don't want to bother with that, and besides, sugar is quite a good resource, so we'll keep it. Now, as we'll be conquering provinces in the Inca region, remember to transfer all of them to your colony. Otherwise, for one, you won't be able to take those provinces. Secondly, if you do take them, another colony would form here, and we don't want that, and it's time for another war. Unfortunately, there are some distant nations here. The Incas haven't united much, and for now, I'll be isolating these nations for a five-year peace period. First and foremost, because I won't conquer them right away, and we conquer the rest from the end, of course, so that it quickly goes to our colony. There's also a very important reason why I'm not conquering all the nations here. I'm hoping they will westernize. Usually they do it between this year 1500 and 1530 once they border with you, but it varies. And honestly, I don't know what it depends on, but if any of you have this knowledge, please share it in the comments. Another important thing to pay attention to is the governing level of your colony to ensure it's not too high. Here we can see that this colony can have a maximum of 500, so soon I will have to start building courts in it. Otherwise, the colony will start to go bankrupt if it's too big. At this point, it has, well, 500 development. I must admit, our colony annexes these provinces very quickly. And I'll tell you one more thing about the organizations. I'm not sure if this bug or exploit still works, because now I assign the organizations. Thinking that this lower modifier will be better, it's possible they didn't fix this exploit, which is when you switch to your colony, then form a new tag. Like Brazil, you will be able to reassign the organizations again. I'm not sure about it. Actually, I could have checked it with the console, but I forgot. So now I'll go with the final bonus that I would want. But if it turns out during this episode that I can distribute these organizations again, the first time we should distribute everything for diplomatic points. Remember that these organizations, apart from giving us these bonuses we see here, also increase their respective diplomatic, administrative or military development points in a given area. Well, it's time for the final strike on the Incas. I'm going all in, but we need to quickly capture all these provinces or else it won't end the war with anyone else. And it's finally time to put forth territorial claims to the area of the Aztecs and the Mayans. Oh no, a comet. Really the first comet in this run. Interestingly, Castile suddenly hates me, even though I have 100 trust points with them. Did something change here? It's very important that you transfer provinces in the right order and always think, if you take this piece, will you be able to transfer this province to your colony and so on? So you see, sometimes you have to think about this peace deal, not to conquer the first one you come across, but in the right order. Yeah, the first battle. Wow. What? Will we finish them off? Will we? Come on, let's go. Oh, look at that. Such a beautiful stack wipe. The first in this campaign and probably the only one. And why is it that these natives are settling in the north? Some of them already and none in the south. Settling means that suddenly all these territories, which are marked by them, as you can see, will become these core territories, which we could conquer because right now, unfortunately, we can't. Yes, we're developing gold in every province up to 10 points, no more. And I have quite a bit of it already. And now the last Inca colony has just fallen. I mean, not a colony, the Inca state. Meanwhile, I am already, as you can see, near the Aztecs. The last province I'm colonizing for Brazil. Well, Jamaica will also be for Brazil. It doesn't matter. And we'll be able to start the conquests of the Aztecs. For now, the colony is very loyal, but soon we will need to change it to a crown colony because it has really grown. But we also need to build courts everywhere now. The ordinance, whatever it does, allows me to enact the rise of ordinance decision. Does it generate manpower for all my coastal provinces? I'll take it for a test because I'm curious about about how it works. Uh, which one is it? I don't see any such decision here. Oh, it's here, okay. But it's only in a defensive war. And in war, well, our gold transports are much bigger now. Ooh, Great Britain. By the way, it's the second best country for an exodus, in my opinion. I get seven gold from this colony. Amazing that it works so well now. I'm also slowly starting to sell my remaining provinces in Europe to Castile. We need to have less than five provinces overall in Portugal. But it's economical. Yes, it's time to start further wars with the Aztecs. And how much will I get here? Oh, one year's worth of manpower. Okay, Protestant Reformation in Trier. And here you need to decide whether you want to be Protestant or not, because Protestant countries get really good bonuses for further colonization. However, you will no longer be able to create local organizations. They are only for Catholics and Sunnis. And since I'm curious about what will happen here after the change to Brazil, I'll remain a Catholic. We don't need to develop the third idea any further. Well, not necessarily, because it depends on how we want to transition to Brazil. But I'll talk about that later in the 
episode, because most likely within the next 20 years we'll be going into Brazil anyway, and it's really a waste to spend those points on this idea. Yay, we're destroying the last... Seriously, I wanted to show you this battle, but look, I'm getting these bad events, but we're crushing them, and now, stack wipe, whoa, they're gone, and now I have a bit of clicking ahead of me because I have to transfer all of this to Brazil. And we have a colony with 1000 development. Well, 20 years later than it should be done standardly, but currently I don't think it can be done any faster. It seems I need a land connection to the capital. All of this is treated as overseas provinces. All right, that's gonna be a challenge. I will just core these provinces myself. But most importantly, as soon as we core them, we have to transfer them to Brazil. Fortunately, a colony is created when there are five cored provinces in a given colonial region. Look, with our colony, we are almost the largest empire in the world. I've established courts throughout my entire colony, the most lawful country in the world, truly. So when will you finish this administrative technology level 10? And unfortunately, the reformation era has begun, so we lose our great bonuses for colonization. This is the moment when we should already be transitioning to our Brazilian Portugal. But I will finish the conquest first. I've just changed this war colony into crown colonies. And look, I can have almost 20 more troops. I don't know if I'm overdoing it, but this might be a very interesting war. Wow, where did this inflation come from? Ah, my colony has its own wars. Okay, what does meddling colonial rivals mean? Well, at least I'll fight with these savages here. Look, hey, we're smashing their army. It's so nice to watch, especially since they just split into smaller armies, so it's very easy to destroy them. Hey, something weird happened to me, something really strange. The Aztecs are at war with me and were allies with Tarascan. Now they are at war with Tarascan and still at war with me. WTF, what's going on here at all? The colony is already giving me 20 gold, not bad. Well, let's say I may have overdone it a little in this war, but only a little. Moreover, Brazil has a few monuments worth noting, one of the most powerful economic monuments that increases local goods production. Plus 0.50 in the entire region. In the entire region. The whole region is not tiny about this, this, this. This is the entire region of Brazil. So all these areas that you see here. It is a very powerful monument. Another very powerful monument is this one. I don't know. It used to be enough to accept the Aymara culture within the country to have it. But here there are some additional requirements for Ming. Another one which only requires accepting the culture is the one in Machu Picchu. One that requires nothing but for example, increases diplomatic relations, is located in the Chanshan Citadel. Another quite interesting monument is the one that increases our gold income in Mexico. There's another one somewhere here, but these provinces aren't colonized yet. And I never remember if it's this monument or that one. Probably this one. And soon I'll connect our colony into one big one. See, everything here is ready. All right, I've already approached 50% liberty desire. That's why I had to send loyalists there. It's not surprising because this colony is nearing 2000 development. Wow. All right, let the colonies just finish and I'll switch to Brazil. I'm starting to sell the provinces beginning with the Catholic ones and of course those with Portuguese culture just to be on the safe side. Oh, I just need to increase my arm army size. Wait, what? The more you have, the more loyal your subjects are. Spain is doing everything to prevent Spain from buying these provinces from me. They're probably dealing with some sort of overextension. Although I could already release Portuguese Brazil as an independent nation. Oh, all I need to do is click this. And then we mark this and can play as that nation. Well, I wanted to simply relocate and see how this escape to Brazil option works. So I'll wait. Yay, and the Mapuche did what I wanted, which is they settled. They've just started to settle. No, they've settled. Really, Spain? and we succeeded. We can escape to Brazil. But before we do, we spend all the points, all the money. Let's just take 500 loans. Inflation goes up and money goes into the monuments. It's time to leave our poor little Portugal. And we can do it in two ways. First is the one I've already mentioned, by releasing the colony. And that's essentially why I prepared this playthrough. And look at what happens now. We become Portuguese Brazil. We can form Brazil right away. But initially, we get colonial ideas, which are better for conquering this whole area. Additionally, with colonial ideas, if we switch to Protestantism, we wouldn't have any religious issues. We got advanced ideas, and essentially our country earns quite well. We've made states in most of our provinces, and in those states, we've already assigned organizations. I can't distribute them again. The downside of this solution is that we have the usual generic tree. After changing to Brazil, we can adopt Brazilian ideas. We can also choose what form of republic or monarchy we will be, especially if we unpause the game. Look, redistribute privileges again, but this tree still bugs me. The second option is fleeing to Brazil. And honestly, if you want to play for that, you should have played a bit differently. I'll tell you why. Fleeing to Brazil, where, okay, we 
inherited and a country is instantly created for us. We don't need to click anything else, but the economy is much weaker because, well, even your capital doesn't have a state, so you have to click through everything. Another downside, and also an upside, is that we inherit the technology under Portugal as well as innovations, and I think we would have to spend the next 20 years catching up on that technology. Or possibly, we should have been developing it continuously earlier on, but then again, we would have invested less development into Brazil. Similarly, we inherit ideas. As you can see, I didn't develop the third ones, so I don't have them developed either. On the plus side, however, we retain all our government reforms. You get the Portuguese mission tree, which is quite alright, because it will allow you to return to the Iberian Peninsula, of course, and then conquer it for your personal union, which is now Portugal. And you also get the decision whether you want to keep the Portuguese ideas as they are here or not, and simply switch to Brazilian ones and you can reassign the institutions again. Let me know which path you would choose, which one do you think is stronger? Is it fleeing to Brazil or transitioning to the Brazilian colony and forming Brazil? If you are wondering what is the best way to play colonization in EU4, I recommend this three episode series to you, where it shows step by step how to build a strong starting economy in Castile. Then I show many tricks to colonize as quickly as possible to ultimately draw thousands of gold from the colony a year and have a colonial bonus of over 200 to the army limit.